Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at an example that illustrate auditing inventory and the warehousing cycle. And basically, I have six lectures about inventory and warehousing cycle. You can view them prior to view this recording if you're interested. So let's go ahead and look at this example. So this is what this example asks us to do. Identify whether each procedure that we have, we have eight procedures here, whether it's a test of control or a substantive test. Sometimes it could be both at the same time and state the purpose of each procedure. So what is this procedure? Is it, is it a test of control? Is it substantive testing? And what is it trying to uh, accomplish? What is the purpose of the procedure? So let's go ahead and start with the first procedure. And the first procedure reads, read the client read the client physical inventory instruction and observe so read and observe whether they are being followed by those responsible for counting the inventory so for one what do you think that is do you think that's a substantive procedure or a test of control well that's a test of control you're basically reading the physical inventory instruction basically reviewing the instruction then observing to see if they are doing what they're supposed to do why are you doing so well it, it served many many purposes it serves just this is to make sure that they are following what they're supposed to follow basically it serves the existent assertion we want to make sure that all the inventory is, is existed the completeness and accuracy okay and classification we want to know if they are doing what they're supposed to do okay that's what we're doing but this is once again test of control not a substantive testing but the purpose is we'll meet all these assertions two Two, it reads, use audit software to compute inventory turnover by major product line and compare it to the inventory of the prior year. Hopefully you know what this is. This is my favorite thing. This is analytical procedure. Analytical procedure is a form of substantive test. It's a part of a substantive test. What is the purpose? Basically here you are looking at the accuracy. Also you're looking at the completeness. It's gonna give, it's gonna give you an idea if the it's not going to be 100 accurate but it's going to tell you if the inventory is accurate if you accounted for the all the inventory also existence so it serves many purposes okay, again it's not the best evidence but it's a starting point number three account for sequence of inventory tags and reach each each tag to the physical inventory to make sure it actually exists here what you are doing is you are accounting for the sequence of the inventory tag so you have the tags tag one tag two tag three and you are accounting for them making sure they're there and you're tracing each tag to the inventory that does the tag this is the tag does it relate to some sort of inventory okay first of all this is a substantive test you are doing actual work this is a substantive test for sure and what are you trying to accomplish here you want to make sure that all the inventory is represented by a tag well this is existence okay so i'm accounting for the tags and does the tag is it is the tag attached to an inventory does the inventory actually exist so this is substantive test and it deals with existence four it says compare four says compare the client inventory physical count at the interim date with the perpetual inventory master file now we are comparing the client count so the so the client did the count and now you're comparing the count well this is a form of substantive testing why? Because you're seeing if the balance is correct. You're comparing the count. You're comparing the count to the to the to the record. Okay, so it's a substantive test. Four is a substantive test. What are you trying to measure here? Well, for for one thing, accuracy. Of course, accuracy is important here because if they match, then they are accurate. That's accuracy. Also, existence, completeness. Okay, those are also. Uh, 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 served here number five trace the inventory test count recorded in the audit file to the inventory compilation okay so look at the uh, auditor test count and compare to the tag numbers and description and quantity so you're looking at the count and you're comparing that to the tag number description and quality do they match hopefully you know this is a substantive test this is a substantive test not the test of control and what's it what's it really um covering well it's covering many things it's covering the uh, the it's testing the client final inventory compilation because you're comparing what they counted to the tag number description and quantity so you're looking at many things you want to this you will you will test for existence you will test for 
completeness, you will test for accuracy and the description will let you know if they are properly classified, classification. So it's, 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 it's accomplishing many goals. Number six, compare the unit price on the final inventory summary with the vendor invoice, with the vendor invoice. So what you're looking at is you're seeing, well, this is the, this we have $3 as a unit price and I'm comparing this to the invoice. The invoice also says we purchase it for $3. This is a form of substantive testing. And hopefully you know what are we measuring here? Definitely we're measuring accuracy. The accuracy of what? To make sure that the inventory is valued at the proper cost. This is, this is how we measure accuracy. Six, uh, compared, yeah, we did six, I'm sorry, seven. Account for a sequence of raw material requisition. So look at the sequence. So we have forms, raw material requisition, and we're looking at the sequence and examine each requisition for an authorized approval. So we're looking at those um, raw material requisition and saying, do, they, do we have approval? Do we have approval? Guess what? When we're looking for those type of trade, hopefully you know by now, this is a test of control. This is not a substantive testing. Why? We want to make sure that no raw, no raw material was issued without proper authorization. Here we're looking for authorization. So here we're looking for existence. Okay, so we want to make sure no raw, mater no raw material was issued without approval. Okay, and it's a test of control, not a substantive testing. Eight, trace the recorded addition on the finished goods perpetual inventory master file. So you're looking at the, so you have a master file. So you have a file somewhere and you're looking at the additions of the inventory and compare this to the record for completed production. So what you're saying, is, what you're saying is, what you're saying here is, you're looking at the perpetual inventory master file and you're seeing all the additions, okay? And compare this to the completed production. So basically, whatever they added, that it made it all the way till the end. Well, this could be a test of control and this could be a substantive testing, okay? What, what, what are we trying to make sure here? We're, we're trying to make sure that any addition, that addition recorded on finished goods perpetual inventory were recorded as completed production. So basically, if they are recorded here, they're going to make it to the finished goods. Here, you're looking for accuracy. Okay. And also here, you're looking for classification because remember, it could be, it could be raw material finished goods or uh, raw material finished goods or work in process. So here, you're, you're seeing when we're adding it, what type of inventory are we adding to the perpetual inventory? But this could be a test of control or a substantive testing. Hopefully, this exercise kind of starting to put all the lectures together and you are getting better at determining what is a test of control what is what is a substantive testing and what's the reason for a substantive testing what what does it serve what what is substantive testing serve does it serve existence completeness accuracy so on and so forth if you have any questions any comments by all means email me or see me in class and if you're studying for your cpa exam make sure to study hard